I was recently uh, part of a, an international study uh, that was published recently in The Lancet and uh, that involved six different countries and we were looking at rates of uh, indicators of child maltreatment uh, and the indicators we looked at were violent deaths, uh, hospitalizations for maltreatment and involvement in child welfare services. And through the course of doing this project, um, I learned in doing the comparisons with the other countries that Canada has a startlingly high rate of kids in care. In 2007, there were over 65,000 kids in care in Canada, uh, and that was taken on a single day. Uh, in Manitoba, our numbers are around nine, between nine and 10,000 kids in care. Uh, and those are some of the highest rates in the world. Different countries deal with child welfare in different ways. So if you look at Sweden, if you look at some of the European countries, they take a, a real child, a family welfare approach where the whole family is treated. So rather than remove a child from risk, the, the, the family is given intensive supports to try and reduce the risk while the child stays in the family. Whereas in Canada and the United States we take more of a child protection approach, uh, child safety at all costs and generally once a risk assessment is done if the child is felt at harm um, or, or there's a risk of harm uh, the child will be removed from the home. So at this point we really don't know which is the better way because there haven't been a lot of scientific studies comparing different out outcomes for, for kids uh, treated differently. Is that the majority of kids taken into care in Manitoba are Aboriginal. So there's really disproportionate representation of Aboriginal kids in, in foster care. In, in Manitoba right now, probably about a quarter of all kids are Aboriginal and yet almost 90% of the kids in care are Aboriginal. So the question is raised, you know, are we treating a Aboriginal families who face challenges, who face these kind of uh, uh, risks differently than we treat non-Aboriginal families? Uh, in 2008, the Prime Minister of Canada stood up in the House of Commons and apologized on behalf of all Canadians for uh, taking Aboriginal children away from their homes, away from their families, and placing them into residential schools. And there was a recognition that doing that, that tearing these kids away from their communities, away from their families, had lasting impact and damage. And I guess the question is raised now, with the way we treat Aboriginal kids in the foster care system, 20 years from now, are we going to be apologizing again? The University of Winnipeg recently came out with a, a strategy where they are allowing uh, kids who have been through the care system to go to university, to go to University of Winnipeg without having to pay tuition, so their tuition is covered. And the, the government of Manitoba is, is also putting in funds so that these kids, their, their texts and their room and board is paid for, which is, is absolutely great to, to be providing supports like that to kids who have gone through such adversity in their lives. The problem is, from our research, we find that many kids who go through the care system never make it through high school. So um, I think about 70% of uh, kids in the last analysis we did uh, who have been through the care system did not graduate from high school within six years of entering high school. So it's a great program as long as you've got the kids making it through school. What I would suggest is that we have to start providing the supports these kids need right from the get-go, right from day one, uh, even before kids enter school. Because we know that when uh, these kids enter school, in, a, in another study we recently did, um, looking at developmental health at the point kids are entering school at kindergarten, already at the point they're entering school, twice as many kids who have been through the care system are have fallen behind, have some vulnerabilities uh, than the general population. So very early on in early childhood we have to be providing the supports so these kids are entering school ready to learn and then supports throughout their school career so that they do make it through high school so they can take advantage of programs like the University of Winnipeg is offering.